and uh, just kind of shared it with him and got his thoughts on that. And uh, we we have a lot of very similar, and it's Chad Rick, not Chad Wick, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. I'm really bad. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, uh, I guess, you know, he's got a lot of, uh, input from a lot of directions on you know the voting system and the uh and the reward system mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, i'm not sure i, I uh, understand fully uh, uh uh the uh, uh the system that they have in place now with uh that we were testing mm -hmm. uh, with the uh uh, contributor and the voter. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you what I think I understand about it and see if see if this makes sense to you. Um, what I saw and when I talked to him, so so they don't have like a budget like say Dash does, right? They don't they don't have a budget that automatically gets gets created um, as of today. What they, what they do have is a, uh, so somebody puts in a contract and they say, yeah, I'm willing to do this for however many IOP tokens. Um, and then the community votes on whether they'll get that or not. And then it plays out of, it plays out of each, um, it pays out of each block reward. Right. After, after that contract is set up. Well, the thing I didn't understand is that in order to, you know, put uh, something in to the, uh, in order to put in a proposal, I had to have the, um, I, I had to have the money. In other words, I could only propose what I, uh, 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 IOP tokens that I had. Right, and I, I I think what that what that is trying to do is it's trying to um, stop spam from coming into the system. So basically, it lo it locks up your thousand IOPs for a for a period of time. Okay. So, so I, 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 it doesn't cost you a thousand, but it it makes you lock them up. Um, so you know you're not going to sell those. You're not gonna you're not gonna be trading those. You're not doing anything with those except dealing with this proposal. Okay, so I guess that means you have a stake in IOP, so you're yep. eligible to put in a proposal. Yep, yep. And so when I when I talked to him about, um, did you have a chance to look through that uh, that that uh, Prezi? Yes. Okay. So, do you mind if I share that Prezi and and go to the part right. that I'm talking yeah, about? Please do. Okay. I, mean, I, I went through it and I, you know, I understood it. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, let me see if I can even find it here. Uh, Can I actually, um, I mean, it, it only takes, you know, five, 10 minutes and we could discuss. Do you, do you mind if I just present it to you as I did with him and kind of walk you through the whole thing? Uh, please do, please do. Okay. Uh, share your All screen. Right. <laughs> you're, you're recording this too, right? So we can, yeah. anybody who wants to watch it can, can uh, check it out, right? Right. Okay, so let me, let me make sure I got the screen share thing working, which I don't. Okay, tell me if you can see that, or when you can see it. I can see it. Okay, so stakeholder. So everything starts with the, the stakeholder, um, and this is, I didn't understand completely how IOP worked 
the IOP governance system worked before I wrote this up. I, I was basing this on my understanding of Dash and my understanding of the original uh, PIVX uh, governance system. Okay, and and then my own idea is kind of thrown in there. So it starts with a stakeholder. You know, each wallet is staking and earning rewards. Um, then I believe what's going to happen is you've got, oops, you've got, uh, well, this isn't working at all. Hold on. It worked good for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here. I think it might have something to do with, did you hit the app? Back to the start. Yeah, this is, hold on. Okay, I might have to do it from down below. Okay, so starts with a stakeholder. Um, they're earning rewards. Then you've got 50% of the reward um, going into your wallet. And then 50% of the reward is going to what they call a super block budget this is every about every month a super block is released or and then that that total that's in there from all the different stakeholders are being dumped into this super block budget right and um you've got different size stakeholders you've got different people um but they're every time a reward is one half of that half of that reward goes into that that black budget so then what you end up with is you got your people putting in proposals. Um, now this, the first bullet point there, start a project is, is different than, um, this has everything to do with the distributed incubator and not so much um, to do with how the current systems work. The current systems are all about, um, let's, let's advance our coin or let's advance our technology, you know, specifically. Um, but what I'm saying is let's open that up to projects as well. And either case, um, you're going to have to prove that you have ROI for the community. Um, and then you got lots of proposals. And the reason that they had that 1,000, like you were asking, why do you have to have 1,000, is to, to get rid of the, uh, the problem of spam. And so then... Uh, what I'm thinking is if we implemented a crowdfunding phase, maybe just for these, maybe, maybe this would be for everything. You could probably run this for, um, for any type of uh, proposal that you're doing. But if you had a crowdfunding phase where you could, you could set up a percent, percentage however you wanted to, but let's say, let's say you have to have 50% of the funds you're asking for come from the, individuals in the community before before it'll even go forward to the next step or something yeah this uh, has a lot of advantages yeah uh, if uh, uh for example our chain has a problem paying bounties because uh, uh it has to treat people as employees but if mm -hmm. a project is crowdfunding and they match the funds that are raised uh they could uh, call that charity. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, you could. Oh, that's interesting. I never even considered that. Because that, that cuts through some, or I don't know what you'd call it, but it, it's, it kind of changes the regulations a little bit if, you, if you're following, if you have to apply, abide by some regulations. Okay, so, so yeah, anyway, um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe you could do it that way. You could really set that percentage up to be anything you wanted. I mean, you could say, okay, let it be, let it be wide open and the individuals can fund everything. And then you'd have more of like a, more of like a completely 100% crowdfunded uh, portion, you know, or you could say, you know, um, up to 10, you could set that to whatever you wanted to. So anyway, um, what that would do then is, because you have all these proposals coming in, only the ones, um, well, okay, here's the crowdfunding phase details. So you've got individual stakeholders putting money towards a proposal, and then the stakeholders get first dibs on funding the proposal. And the reason that they would do that 
is so that they could have first dibs on receiving a ratio of one to one for this project's project utility tokens. Okay. So not every not everything is going to be run like this. Probably only the the projects that are that are going to become projects on their own that are going to have autonomy. So you probably would not run this through like something like uh, like like you know make making a uh, I don't know putting a feature into Pivx or say something like that. You know you you probably wouldn't do this type of a thing where you'd create tokens for that, but you know, for something that's an autonomous project, you you could do this. So you could make this a type of a uh, type of a proposal. You know, proposals could have different types, and we kind of chatted about that a little bit in the in the Slack. So anyway, um, individuals would do this to get the one to one ratio, and think of project utility tokens like you would um, think of them as ownership shares. You know where you know, you might you might be paying dividends if uh, if you have a for profit project or something you know, um, and you pay dividends based on however many puts that, that they own for this project. Um, you know, voting could be handled this way if if you wanted to if you wanted to have only the people that are you know super serious about the project or invested in the project. If you want to have them having voting, you know, you could whatever. I mean, basically the. A put is anything, and you can do anything with it, as long you know any. As long as the community agrees, that can be programmed with some kind of a contract or whatever to do, to do essentially anything. Um, okay, so now what you have is, let's just say you had, let's say you had an open-ended um, crowdfunding phase. So anything that's not fully funded by the individuals then gets listed in, they get listed basically by a priority. So the ones that are funded the most um, would show up first, you know, um, and not by percent, but by amount or something like that. And then you can see how much interest, how much community interest is towards this. So then the people that don't want to spend all day long looking at these individuals, individual proposals, they just wait for phase one to be done. And then they kind of see, okay, they're, you know, proposal A and proposal B, there's a lot of people that are getting behind these. So this is the, and I need to look more, I need to look further into these. So it kind of lets, uh, lets the community be that, that uh, investigators, right? So, <clears throat> okay. I still got you, Jim? Yeah, you can do. Okay. So then what you have is uh, you have the stakeholders being the gatekeepers to whatever's in that super block budget. So they can say yes or no on individual proposals, and they vote on those. And then uh, once they vote yes, then it goes ahead and it releases those funds from the super block budget into that proposal. And at the same time that that happens, you have these project utility tokens that are created one to one and they're pushed to the individuals first who funded the crowd in the crowdfunding phase. So they're getting them one to one. And then what it does is because everybody vote, because the, the majority voted yes, the, the remainder gets split up into however many stakeholders are out there and they each get a real small percent based on probably their holdings in the main coin or something like that. So everybody gets a little bit um, of anything that's, that's voted yes. <clears throat> so then what you end up with is you have stakeholders with your main token and then you have stakeholders with all these little tokens, you know, I mean, that they be doing stuff with. Um, and then what you end up with over time is you'd end up with stakeholders with a bunch of different tokens in there. And what um, the argument is that doesn't this just dilute the, uh, the main coin 
and the network. And I would say if, um, if the community is not voting, well, I'll just jump back here. Let's see. Go back to the proposal and kind of hit that last bullet point, the return on investment. The, um, the, project, the projects that are asking for this funding and creating these tokens, they're going to have to prove that they're going to, that they're going to be return on investment for the entire community. I mean, that's, otherwise they're not going to get any funding anyway. Um, so yeah, if projects can't show that they will be a benefit to the entire ecosystem, then they will not get the funding needed to complete the project in the first place. So it's up to each project to make its own case. And then, um, if you're doing metadata tokens like colored coins in, in the Bitcoin blockchain, or you know, if, if you had these tokens, every transaction of these small tokens ends up being a transaction fee for the whole network. You know, so so the network is actually gaining by having these these small tokens. If people are you know trading them back and forth, doing different things with them. Um, multiple projects mean we learn from each other. This kind of goes back to the whole Divi University idea, especially if you can, let's, let's say you started up a project and you had no developers to begin with. And you said, okay, what we're going to do with this is we're just going to, we're going to fund a bunch of bounties out there. And these bounties are going to be for an expert to train a, uh, a work study group, you know, so we can get busy and we can get a bunch of, a bunch of fledgling developers out here um, building this thing with with some mentor kind of leading the way and 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 holding our hands while we while we learn things, you know. Um, now, the metadata, metadata token is that the same as a uh, what do you call it? A, a, yeah, I'm calling it a project utility token, but really, it what it is is it it, it just lives on the blockchain. And that's what MadeSafe is, uh, the MadeSafe coins. Um, they're just metadata tokens that live on, live on Bitcoin's blockchain. So yes, that, that, is, that is what, uh, what they are. Um, they're this, excuse me, they are the same thing. They are just uh, metadata tokens. So, so the technology is there and people, you know, people know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. People know how to do it. Um, and then again, the third point there, investors come from the parent coin network and they'll steer the project to be an asset to the whole network. Otherwise, you know, why did, why did, we, why did we vote to fund this thing to begin with if we're not gonna be involved and, and try to help steer that to, to help the whole ecosystem? Um, so then what you end up with is you've, again, you've got this whole ecosystem and then it's building other ecosystems within it. And then eventually, you know, someday these, these e ecosystems might become their own autonomous, you know, whatever. It might live on something else or it might have its own blockchain or whatever. Um, and again, they, you know, they would be related in some way that they, they got started within this other one. And their, their whole premise was that we're going to return ROI. Let's just say um, PIVX, for example, you know, or, you know, you're, div you're, you're, I don't know how it would work. I have, I have no idea, but let's say you're building a, a game or something that, you know, will only accept pivots or something. I, I have no idea how you would, how you would, every project would be different. Every project would have to prove what their, what the communities are return on investment is going to be. But that's, that's the whole presentation. And uh, yeah, that's what I got so far. All right. Um, I, no, I mean, uh, um, you know, you know, got the uh, the basic pieces there. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, um, uh, you know, my my thoughts on the coin is uh, that uh, 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 we. Uh, 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 we can create a project token for a project we want to do. Um, uh, 
and award them to ourselves as you know for the work that we do yeah sure yep yeah as well as to get donations sure. for for the project um, now uh, in that scenario um, you would then want to propose the project to IOP and redeem possibly redeem project tokens for IOP. Uh, it's just another twist on that. So I, I need to see that. I need a big whiteboard and I need to see what you mean. I, I think I'm understanding it. So um, say it one more time. Um, so I, I, I guess I'm, this is another use case. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. Uh, where uh, the uh, 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 well, let's take an example here of uh, the Divi U. Uh, Mining sheet here for uh, 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 the giveth. Okay, and uh, in this case, we allocated uh, Divi tokens, mm -hmm. uh, which were uh, uh, because of, you know Divi was funding the project. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, let's say uh, we have this. Uh, uh, Tokex project, and we create a Tokex token, and uh, uh, we get, uh, create a budget of Tokex token, and then by lazy consensus, we assign them to team people who participate in the team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, we also uh, uh, so we uh, 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 we can uh, create them as Ethereum tokens, for example, and trade them immediately um, and mint them, you know, uh, according to what the rules that we set up. Um, and then the uh, the project completes a proof of concept or something. They complete a proposal. They complete a detailed proposal, let's say, to IOP or Archain or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'm really looking at solutions that benefit a lot of communities, not just IOP. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yep. Um, so uh, uh, now we put, put in a proposal to IOP. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it goes through the process you just described. Mm -hmm. Okay, now when IOP funds it, um, they would uh, 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 they would uh, uh, give uh, 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 the uh, uh, no give the option of people to uh, trade their tokex tokens for IOP tokens mm -hmm. so that they could take them to the market if they wanted to yep yep okay. or or they could they can keep them for whatever that whatever that token's going to mean for maybe keep them or maybe change uh, trade you know maybe rock maybe uh our chain will provide some uh sponsorship and they can get rock if they want it uh, sure sure you know maybe uh uh divi fan will come in and put some cash on the table and they can get cash mm -hmm. whatever um sure but the, uh, I guess the idea is, you know, 
to a, autonomously crowdfund with a project token, okay, to handle everything up to the point where you can make a reasonable proposal to make to productize it. In other mm -hmm. words, go, you know, where most of your cost comes in is in going from a proof of concept to production. Yep. Okay, so um, uh, uh, the project token can get you through the proof of concept and the proposal stage uh, when you can get some real money, and maybe you won't need it. Maybe you maybe you'll get enough donation, you know, contributors or whatever, and have a you know and have a reasonable plan to uh, uh, get, have uh, your project to tokens return the value. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, so there's you no. Know, uh, I, I'm just uh, thinking of different scenarios here. I mean, if we look at the bar chain uh, noob school dist distribution, you get the same kind of thing here. But uh, here we're here we're talking about rock tokens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So um, uh, I guess what I'm thinking is for IOP. Um, uh, we could create project tokens that in our own mind are equivalent to IOP, uh, are valued as IOP tokens. That could be right. Because we've asked, so so let's say we put in a proposal for, you know, what, it, let's, I mean, this is a preposterous amount, but just say 10,000 IOP tokens, right? If, 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 you're, if you're saying, okay, we're going to start with 10,000 of these, you could say, I want to order for 10,000 and then or it wouldn't have to be I mean basically you're you're paying out based on however much they they received of this token and um, you know uh, in the inception stage okay in the inception stage I mean they're paid out uh, to represent the work and effort people put in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, independent of whether it's ever funded or not. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Now, okay, they could spend 10,000 project tokens, which they valued at, you know, well, let's just say a dollar. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, they spent ten thousand uh, dollars developing a proof of concept and developing a proposal, submitting it to IOP. IOP sponsors uh, uh, like it, and they come up with the, you know, they come up with uh, 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 And they and they fund it, and the funding would include um, uh, buying backs, uh, some or all of the project tokens, perhaps, as well as providing the tokens necessary to get the project into production. So, so basically, we, we you you would ask for in, in the contribution contract, you'd ask for okay, we want we want this much because. You, this is you what we so like far. this idea. This is the proposal. This is a proof of concept. They say the whole community, which includes us, says, "Yeah, we like this." Um, and then we so we ask for the initial amount, and then we ask for an extra amount to continue the work and bring it up and and until it's produced completely. And so that make that makes sense to me. So so then you're you you're kind of working on. You're working on sweat equity up front because you don't know for sure if when people are getting credit for their effort in terms yep. of tokens, which essentially have no value because they're not traded in on the exchanges. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, and uh, 
uh, because they have no value, you're also uh, don't have very many legal constraints. Right, right. Uh, um, but um, uh, yeah, another another thing nice, another thing that would that would be really nice on this is that I don't know how you do it. You, you, you basically, I want I want to be able to own. I want to be able to own something or a part of something and actually do work on it and everything in a way that nobody really knows who I really am, <laughs> you know? Um, and, uh, you know, relationships are going to be hard to build that way, but uh, that would be, that'd be really cool. And then I could basically build up my reputation just in that community itself and, then if, if you are using these these project utility tokens and they're just assigned an address, you know, there's no real, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of regulation and stuff you could not have to worry about, which I think is just terrible most of the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, a lot of people in this space are using pseudonyms. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, uh, They have uh, 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 they develop reputation. They they have become trusted. Yep. And uh, yep. I mean, some people are stick sticklers. Like we don't know who he really is. <laughs> <laughs> it's essentially you're you're anonymous, right? Hopefully, yeah. But and, uh, not everybody's going to be able to do that. And you know, like you know, I are you and I. You, you and I doing this, we we can't, you know, you can't do that as you're starting things up. And, and yeah. hopefully someday, hopefully someday we might get to something like that. Well, even Samuel Clemens, you know, went, didn't use his real name. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, okay, so um, I, uh, you know, I, 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 you invited me to that one document and, and I, I kind of had, I had to tell you no. I have, I have to really watch. I got a lot of things going on and I have to really watch what I, what I commit to and, you know, um, what I'm going to spend most of my time on. Cause it's very limited because, you know, basically a couple of nights a week is all I have to, to work on stuff and with a full-time job and everything. Um, and that's, you know, this is the other thing of why we need to have teams. Yep. It is, Busy people, they got jobs, they've got a life, they want to see the world change. Yep. But they can't do it full time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that that was my whole my whole point behind you know that the uh the Einstein quote, you know, that every everything that is that is that is really great is is created by those who can um uh, who can uh, work in freedom, you know, who can, who can, who can create in freedom. And my, my whole thought is, you know, you build up a reputation and you start working on these projects and before too long, hopefully, you know, hopefully you're doing full-time stuff and, and you're being, you're being compensated for the stuff that you're doing and uh, and you don't need anything else after a while, you know. Yeah. So, uh, labor and freedom—that's it. But um, everything really, truly great is created by those that can labor in freedom. Yeah. Uh, because, go go ahead. So so I guess I said that because I'm not sure I'm not sure where we want to go, and and where I specifically where I want to put my efforts and energy, and I, I just don't know. I do have in two weekends I have a, uh, um, uh, I'm actually doing a 
I got to do a, I'm, I'm preaching in two weekends and I got to get together a message for that. So I'm going to be spending a lot of this next two weeks focusing on that. And, um, but after that, it should open up some for me. Um, so, um, uh, there's a lot of potential projects and, uh, uh, as of now, um, uh, we're sort of short on both uh, coaches and students <laughs> mm -hmm. or study groups. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, topics going around. And uh, uh, the uh, The uh, uh, latest thing is a uh, the uh, clean room implementation, scale implementation of uh, of the rosette uh, virtual machine. Um, I'm not familiar with that at all, Jim. What is, what is this? Um, well, you know, uh, you know. Uh, the art in the arching group, uh, we really have to have, uh, you know, uh, mostly it's learning Scala and Rolang. Uh, our, cha our chain is a trustworthy computational environment. Uh, it's, you know, a blockchain on steroids that has trustworthy, that gives you a trustworthy world computer that we all share. It operates by your rules. Um, it's a, oh, it, in a verifiable manner. It's similar to Ethereum. Then is that is that the idea, or is it? Well, Ethereum, you know, basically allows you to run contracts, but you know, most of your application is off the blockchain. Um, I mean, it is a general purpose computer in a sense. It doesn't do I/O. It doesn't, you know. Uh, uh, you're, you're saying Ethereum doesn't do I.O. Ethereum. Right, right, okay. And, and also, you know, Ethereum uh, isn't, uh, isn't mathematic, doesn't have mathematically constrained behavior. Okay, okay. all right. Um, our chain is based on Rolang, which uses behavioral typing to constrain the behavior of your contracts. And I think right, we went over this a little bit before, uh, but... Um, uh, after the uh, uh, the Dow exploit, um, uh, the um, uh, Greg Meredith, who uh, uh, is the father of Rolang, so to speak, he uh, wrote the contracts in Rolang and showed they wouldn't even compile because okay. they, they weren't constrained to the behavior that was intended. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Okay, so um, uh, that's an exciting thing, but we don't know how long it's going to take before we can actually use it. Even okay. Ethereum is still beta, sort of. Yep, yep. Rolag is going to be, you know, a while, uh, a ways down the road. But in the meantime, well, we're trying to uh, get developers to, to learn these unfamiliar concepts. They have to learn functional programming. They have to learn... Uh, the, uh, the the process calculus uh, that's the basis of Rolang uh, and uh, um, the behavioral hygiene system. You have to, you know, it, it's you know, I mean, it's a big learning code. There's we need a lot of a lot of uh, work study there <laughs> to mm -hmm. bring the community up to speed. Uh, and right now we're hurting. We don't have Scala, and we don't have Scala or C plus uh, plus uh, coaches right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, which is what we need to make progress right uh, on that. I mean, there's other things. Community support. Um, I developed the uh, you know a, a Ethereum membership contract which we're going to use uh, at some point. 
um, um, the uh, initially they were going to you know they wanted the contract to collect dues and they found another way so the uh, the contract I wrote is to uh, basically show that you know the Archain Co-op has verified this person's address or this person's email. Uh, it gotcha. okay. doesn't actually put any personal information on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, it's just uh, 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 let you know that that uh, uh, they have. Uh, mm -hmm. They know who this person is. They don't tell no. They don't show you. But uh, uh, and then uh, uh, the uh, the Giveth Work Study Group. Okay, and you know this is where we're talking about tokens for everyone. And the Mini Me token is a very flexible token uh, that we can create and make rules about. And I did. Uh, a very simple donation contract. So you create a coin and people can donate uh, ETH, ETH to the project and get tokens. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They have you know, more complex contracts that do <coughs> campaign, funding campaigns and things like that. I just wanted a simple contract, you know, <laughs> Send it ETH, get project tokens. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure, right. Um, and uh, 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 so uh, 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 the uh, So if we want, you know, want to develop project tokens, I think we can get put together a team to do that, a work study mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and IOP. Okay, we have a. Uh, what is this? Installation log. I got two. I don't think I know if I got the log. I think I missed this. This is the IOP. Yeah, this is the log. Um, uh, The, uh, okay, well, Divi is considering putting in a red, uh, red tooth proposal for the bounty. Mm -hmm. okay, it's a situation where, you know, you say, well, the social networking component uh, that we are using, uh, which could be uh, the uh, The uh, what do you call it? The uh, ma uh, matrix or the uh, uh, matrix or the uh, 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 or the uh, move in dot eu for decentralized social media. You know these are free. They don't get any income. But mm -hmm. at the same time, our chapters are going to be running these nodes, okay, and well, individuals will be running nodes, and uh, uh, that has to be, you know, economically scalable, you know, which could, which uh, that's going to provide something for the uh, uh, 
the node runners in terms of rewards and uh, uh, then there uh, uh, could be a residual that goes back to the the uh, the uh, IOP social application team and the token holders for that IOP social. Sure, sure. Um, or they could all just be bought up by IOP. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, I mean there's, there's a lot of different scenarios here. But mm -hmm. the idea is that I think a number of projects are going to be um, uh, uh, let me just quick dismiss this. Uh, the um, uh, we'll want to do this so we can the project point is a method by which we can get um, contributions from a lot of different organizations. Okay, like for example, the, the, the project points here can be done by Divi, Giveth, and IOP. Mm -hmm. uh, now the Giveth tokens are not tradable. I have to uh, try and, um, understand that. I guess it's uh, uh, that gets them out of a lot of problems. It's like it's just donations. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's a flag in the mini token. Is it tradable or not? Uh, gotcha. And uh, uh, but uh, so uh, not being tradable ha uh, could have some meaning. I mean, it can show equity. There could be dividends associated with it that are not transferable. Uh, whatever. But the, uh, okay, the uh, uh, and uh, you know the the uh, uh, the. IOP coin, okay, on its own blockchain, of course, isn't tradable with all the Ethereum tokens. Um, and the, uh, uh, they're looking at using Iguana, uh, with, uh, which is uh, what, Agora. Uh, Agora Dex. Agama, is that it? Yeah, I'm unfamiliar with this, but okay. Okay, Agama. Um, they have easy decks. Okay, what they what they are doing is they're providing uh, atomic transactions between all different coins that run on Bitcoin compatible blockchains. Okay, yep. Um, and uh, uh, so IOP is, uh, uh, it will be supported by them because they're a Bitcoin clone. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will allow easy transactions between all the coins, uh, you know, that are Bitcoin-like. Gotcha. Uh, uh, so I guess that would include Namecoin and a lot of these other coins that are on their own blockchain, as well as probably Color Coin on Bitcoin Coin itself. Um, um, and uh, what I uh, what I was suggesting here as a uh, as a project for us is uh, 
um, that we do a, a gateway between Oasis Dex, which is uh, uh, I guess the user interface for Maker over the counter. I think. Oops, this is the. This is not the. Uh, is it the link right there at the top? Maker mkr.market? Yeah, Oasis. That's it. Okay. Okay. And this is. Uh, Uh, so I'll put that link in here. Uh, so um, uh, basically, uh, you know, I just of course nobody respond, nobody uh, reacted to it. Um, put a link in there. To it. Uh, and iguana is. What is it, Agora, Agora Easy Dex? Okay, and the idea is if we do, if we, you know, if we build a gateway between um, the, the, uh, uh, the Oasis Dex, which trades all ERC20 tokens, all the all the tokens on Ethereum, okay. with uh, the Easy Dex, which does all Bitcoin compatible tokens, mm -hmm. essentially mm -hmm. have monetary freedom. Yeah, we, then basically you can we can be, be paid in the token we want. And we can spend in the token we don't want. <laughs> right, right, right. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. Uh, so that would be an exciting project if we can get a team. Mm -hmm. uh, although, what's your real uh, uh, your, your uh, crowd founding? I, uh, I have assumed is uh, is your interest. Yeah, I mean that that that's always been my interest, and that's that's kind of that is my interest. But uh, you know, I, I I you know I don't know where to start. <clears throat> I don't know where to start with it, and I don't know. You know, I I started that conversation well with you guys with Divi. I mean, you guys are doing something similar. You guys you know want to do something similar. I I I think what it has to be on though, it has to be on something that has a budget. And has tokens that are that are worth something today that that you could um, I mean that you could really incentivize people that they could make real money you know helping out and contributing um, I think that's what you're to me I think that that's what makes sense um, yeah but I don't know I mean I I I want to see I want to see crowdfunding work on anything. <laughs> really, I mean, I want to I want to see the concepts. Work. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I, what I suggest, you know, is that if we get a team that wants to build something, mm -hmm. work study group, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that we create a token. Shop for donations and reward people in the token, and then um, uh, uh, hopefully we can um, uh, you know we can also fund the project. I mean, the other way is to. You know, take a project like Red Tooth that has a bounty already. 
okay, make a proposal, but all the work, the planning, designing, preparing the proposal, again, is, you know, volunteer work. So, I mean, even for that, we need a token just to do the accounting yeah. for the effort that people put in. Mm -hmm. Um, even if it's not used for anything else, I mean, <laughs> right, um, right. Um, but the fact is, it can be used to to receive donations, and uh, 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 and uh, there's the potential of getting other sponsors. Uh, you know, you know what, you know what the. Uh, in my little Prezi presentation, if you had the if you had the crowdfunding crowdfunding round of that, you know, if 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 you're working on not not red tooth or I mean whatever, just okay. So so take the the crowdfunding project project coins or whatever, you know, if um. If you, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm thinking too many thoughts in my head and can't keep it straight. Um, if you had the crowdfunding portion of that, you'd you'd have to show some. You'd have to you'd have to you know say, okay, here's here's what we're hoping to do. This is how you would get return on investment. I mean, basically, it's a proposal, right? This is how you're going to get return on investment, and then basically, you you would almost do an ICO, but it's, you know, it's, it's not really that, but you're, you're donating to help build this thing. You could, you could run it just like, just like I'm saying without, without any, you could run the process, I guess, like I'm, like I'm laying it out and, or like you've, you guys have laid it out, you know, um, yeah, I'm having trouble explaining this. Um, you, mean, you, you, don't, you don't need to have tokens to do the accounting, or what's you know, that? I'm not not sure what you're saying. Uh, no. So so you you could you could essentially you could sell the tokens or or allow people to to donate to. Basically, you do an ICO. You, essentially, you would do an ICO for to get people to donate towards the initial budget for this thing. All right. And then, and then, you know, you'd have, you'd have your different things, you know, you'd, you'd need to bring in, you know, you might need to bring in mentors or whatever. Yeah. Um, Let's let's talk some more. I want I want to do something. I want to do something. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be busy in my evenings for probably the next two weeks. I got that presentation to do on the sixth, um, but then after the sixth, I should have I should have some more time to be able to devote to stuff. Um, so. Um, so I would say, you know, the crowdfunding side of it, um, I think we can work with Giveth on that and we can do any kind of, uh, you know, we can do various kinds of crowdfunding, either my simple contract for donations or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a more, uh, sophisticated campaign. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and um, uh, we simply have to have to get a project. Um, we can uh, set up uh, set up some sheets mm -hmm. where we use weak consensus to award people for their activities. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, and then we can and then we can do proposals for bounties the IOP or whoever mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. now uh, no, I guess what I'm thinking of with the red tooth, I think that would be a very popular one for people to do, donate to. Mm -hmm. your, your TCP IP networking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's outside of my wheelhouse, but uh, but yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I think a lot of people would. Uh, you understand net, net mesh networking at all? Uh, I mean, I mean, in theory, yes. Yeah, I understand it in theory. Yeah, back in uh, nineteen, back in the nineteen eighties, we had the Electronic Information Exchange System at NJIT, and we put it on the amateur the ham radio networks. Uh, one of uh, one of our uh, colleagues there was an amateur radio enthusiast who was working on. Uh, packet radio software and uh, uh, so we had the system on a peer-to-peer -peer packet radio network um, and uh, you know, we're connected you know from Boston to Florida <laughs> okay yep uh, and uh, uh, so you know the technology isn't the problem so were you, were you were you part of that? Did you were you involved in that? Yeah, yeah. I was. That's uh, awesome. I yeah. I was uh, project director for the uh, electronic information exchange system. Okay, so there was some deadlines in that uh, that red tooth thing. Did you for doing proposals? <coughs> did you see uh, those? No, I don't remember seeing them. Yeah, there was. Um, I don't remember if it was in a... I don't remember where he put that. Lewis actually threw something out there. He said, I'm willing to do, to do a bounty for this much for, for this stuff. And uh, I don't remember. It might even be that right there. It might, uh, yeah. I think he posted it on the. I think he posted it on Slack, but I don't remember. It's uh, he has on Medium here. Oh, okay, this is it, I guess. Um, yeah, that, I think. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so. First five hundred IOP can be claimed upon delivering complete specifications of version one, and it's by April fifteenth. Expires on April fifteenth. Yeah, it's five days ago. Yeah. Prototype by April twenty second. I wonder if anybody actually did anything. Moving all features April twenty second. Yeah, well, uh, this is an accelerated timeline here. Yeah, it is. Does he mean, uh, I have to ask him if he meant 2017 or 2018. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, it, um, so certainly, uh, certainly, uh, I guess we have to find out the status of that, if, if, you know, if he's going to extend the deadlines. Uh, this is very tight, you know, maybe he had, uh, maybe it's awarded, I, I, but he just mentioned this. Yeah, just, I mean, yeah, I mean, I remember reading it just the other day. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, you've got experience, you've worked with this stuff, I mean, you've worked with with similar ideas and concepts. I mean, this is, this is right up your alley, right? Right. Um, you know, uh, I mean, you're the, uh, the, uh, uh, 
I guess, you know, crowdfunding probably wouldn't come into that if it was done through this. Why? why um, but, um, you know, I'm just waiting for, you know, to, us to get a team to do any of these things because, of, you know, the identity part is very important. Now, we have a meeting Saturday morning on identity. And uh, 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 we have uh, uh, Kit Blake from the Art Chain Group, who's really interested in identity. Uh, that was a Divi project primarily, although we're collaborating with our chain on identity and hopefully with IOP on identity. Uh -huh. So we're trying to put together a, uh, a, a work study group on identity, and we haven't figured out exactly what we're going to do with that. Um, but uh, if we... Uh, Uh, where's identity? The uh, first one. Bring your own ID, single sign-on. You've got the, the cursors blinking on it. Yeah, but uh, where's the... Uh, Uh, this is the project. This is the log. Okay, this is uh, the Saturday meeting. Uh, and uh, Probably got his name wrong. Kid Blake. Um, uh, but here we have uh, 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 we have IOP integration. We have Open ID. We have Web ID. We have the Ethereum viewport, um, and uh, 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 we have the social logins. Uh, okay. Uh, which uh, we're sort of reversing it, you know, instead of bringing in your Facebook, using your Facebook to log it, to give the information to somebody else, you bring in the information from Facebook to control it and who gets it, who gets what. Gotcha. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but, um, you know, I mean, if you come in with the Facebook identity, at least you have that credential if you want to use it. Right, right. You know, you can prove that you're so-and-so on Facebook or on mm -hmm. Twitter or whatever. Sure. Um, and, you know, you can do that whether it's a pseudonym you're, you know, using or uh, 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 your actual identity, whatever. Right, right. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of work in this area. It's, you, know, you know, it's not really developing identity, but it's integrating all of these identity things that are out there. Mm -hmm. The, uh, you know, for IOP, we have uh, 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 so the matrix.org. IDs and uh, uh, move in. .eu. Jabber IDs. Okay, so that's you know one project that might get off the ground, and we might develop. We might develop. We might uh, use tokens for that now. 
right now, you know, there's a divvy budget for that, so we can use divvy tokens. Mm -hmm. um, right. Not much you can, you know, divvy tokens aren't really on the market <laughs> yet, so there's really no value. Uh, uh, there is uh, some uh, marketplace in Divi, not terribly active, but uh, uh, shared hosting and other things uh, are Divi tokens. And in some cases, uh, there's buyback of Divi tokens and other currencies. Uh, uh -huh. you know, we have a budget of AMPs and, and rocks that we can use to buy back Divi tokens if people need to buy bread. Right, sure, Not sure. But, but we yeah, have a budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, Divi Fan uh, has been encouraging us to um, uh, do a small private ICO of a Divi token. Um, we haven't progressed to that too much, too far now. We've been working on a major funding effort uh, with uh, a uh, private customer, MaxForce, who's developing a, uh, uh, a uh, uh, political system that, okay, a political action system or a civic action system, which uh, basically uh, mirrors the whole government in terms of voting districts and elected officials and committees and uh, issues uh, and it has like a multi-level marketing scheme with its own token which it plans to get sponsors to award people you know, um, for uh, civic action you know their civic participation I see. That's interesting. No, so they would, no. No. Activities, you know, uh, of uh, uh, your county by Bob Chevrolet. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I, I mean, they have a bunch of different funding things going on. Well, in any case, give me take, even though they're proprietary sort of uh, they're very much into the open source they understand that most everything's going to be open source uh -huh, uh -huh. they're looking at a very divvy like process so um, right you know we're at very close to having a contract with them for the first phase of that and that's been occupying a lot of people in divvy gotcha uh, 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 going back for weeks and back and forth of discussion and uh, a lot of the Divi people, you know, were really, you know, didn't want to get involved if they were going to be, you know, putting forward a particular political point of view. Right. But you can't stop people from putting out there from the point of view. <laughs> right, right. And, no, we can't, you know, we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't censor them. <laughs> Right, uh, but uh, you know, I mean, the, the system is itself that we're building is agnostic. I mean, you can be any party you want, or no party, or you know, and you know, it'll bring people together with common ideologies and whatever. Uh, so right. you know, it, it, it's not the system itself is not biased. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and uh, uh you know uh, i was i, was, I, I, I wrote upholds divvy principles and all that so you know uh uh they we've really slowed the thing down by people trying to tell max force what their business is or should be <laughs> i actually i wrote something up uh not too long ago um it's not complete or anything but it was uh it was essentially I wanted to figure out a way to. Um, I wanted to figure out a way to do a shadow government. Yeah, that, that's what. Um, that's what they're doing. 
that that's 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 very interesting that's that's very interesting because i was thinking that same thing yeah huh. yeah and apparently they're not the only one there's a lot of things in that direction you know, they have their own plan for growing their network and all that and that'll determine i guess who you know how popular these uh, systems are that people are coming up with. So much happening. There's too much happening. Yeah. <laughs> too much. Too much for for my little brain. Oh man. I mean, you know, just in the identity arena, it's just crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yep. Um, I'm gonna have to get off from here. Yeah. Um. I uh, I want to talk more though, and I want to I want to see what we can actually do. You know, I'm I want to I want to build a team. I want, I want to do something. Well, I mean, you know, my passion is the crowdfunding, but um, I'd be willing to. I I don't know. I don't know what I'm willing to do yet. Crowdfund anything. I yep. guess crowdfunding. Crowdfunding. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, so that we can uh, uh, you know it, 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 in essence create an incubator for mm -hmm. our organizations I some, um, that's sort of the meta task that we really should be working on on the Thursday night meeting here is that meta task I guess I'm just oh, wow. We're hoping for some team who's developing something that yep. we can use as a test bed and develop this crowdfunding process in the context of a team that's doing something. Yep. Yep. How how close is how close is Divi's vision to to doing that? I mean, is that is that really what you guys want to do? I mean, is that what yeah. you guys are doing with Divi? I mean, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, and like I said, you know, you know, and I mean, you can see it with the, you know, the the Divi U idea is mm -hmm. very much in line with that, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, certainly the idea of the ideas of using the project points and other things have come up quite a bit, um, and um, uh, uh, all I get is encouragement from everybody that this is a great thing, but they're not here. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, I mean, it, uh, Everyone involved in Divi is very excited about it. I mean, there's only uh, 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 probably you know uh, half a dozen very active people and uh, uh, another dozen that have been active or sort sort of uh, in the wings, <laughs> and mm -hmm. you know another uh, forty or fifty people that are just kind of. Uh, hanging out, seeing what's happening. Right. Not, it's, no, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to, to get in and decide, okay, what can we do? What, what, what is an actual tangible thing that we can do, you know, to, to move forward in some, in, in a direction, you know, I mean, I, um, I have this, I, I think I shared this document with you. I'm sure I did. The proposed way forward. Did I share that with you um, about the the distributed incubator? Yeah. Um, let's see if I. I think it's uh, right in our uh, chat here. Um, um, Distributed incubator for founding the future. 
Yeah, yeah. If you go down like halfway down, I put another title out there. It's uh, proposed the a proposed way forward. Uh, in in the chat? No, in in that document. Can you can you share the document on your screen? Yeah. Yeah, so if you scroll down, if you keep going, keep going, uh, there's a header, there's a big header, um, keep going. It's um, right after this, keep going, keep going, right there. Uh, no, I'll skip. But yeah, proposed way forward. Did you see this part? I have looked through this. I mean, this, this is what we're doing, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this, this, if this is what Divi's doing, I want to, I want to make it happen. I mean, I mean, I want to, want to figure out how to do this, how to actually make some products that will actually do this. I, mean, I want to, you know, I'd love to see it happen on Pivx or, or IOP or, or, you know, something else or whatever. I mean, I want to see it happen. I've got you guys mentioned in here too. Um, you know, uh, I think I, I'm pretty sure I have Divi in there somewhere. There's Divi U. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see that. <laughs> I guess I didn't read it carefully. <laughs> Unless you just put it in. <laughs> Yeah, this was just something I threw out there because I was like, okay, what can we do to get started and how could we do this? And I just started throwing some ideas out there and, and just seeing what anybody, if anybody would, uh, but apparently I didn't, I didn't share it with you or didn't tell you about it. So there it is. If you want to read through this and then we could talk and, and, uh, um, you know, those first three bullet points right there, you know, hire bounties for mentors from other projects to help train, to help mentor, oh, and then hire, hire bounties for willing learners. Um, what we're doing now is uh, we're uh, uh, there's the uh, Um, okay, is, uh, that, um, uh, for the, uh, coaching, um, That's not listed here. You know what? I, I do have to jump off from here. Um, my daughter just got my daughter just got home from shopping. I got to jump off from here. So basically, um, basically with Divi tokens here, we're we're giving ten dollars in tokens. Uh huh. People just for participating. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. And um, they're actually uh, offering uh, fifty dollars for coaches. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, this was sort of a way to jumpstart things because we have, uh, we have some funds, uh, available, uh, uh from, uh, uh, our, uh, you know, sponsored by Divi fan, mm -hmm. the president of, uh, international bank. He's the guy who wants to do a, uh, a private sale to his friend, him and his friends. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's see how, let's see, 
read read through my proposal and see how see how close we are to talking the same language and and uh, you know I want to I I I got to get off from here though. Yeah. Um, okay. So sure. read through it. Send me some send me some emails or whatever and. Now I have your phone number, so if I want to get a hold of you, I can. <laughs> yeah, if I have to remember now to go in and. Uh, and I get. Uh, I'm gonna have to add you to phone number. <laughs> yep. And uh, uh, usually, you know, I, uh, uh, I mean, you can call me. Uh, uh, I won't bother you by phone because I know uh, you're, 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 you're you're not as available as I am right now. <laughs> Well, you can pretty much always text me. I mean, I'm okay to be texted. Yeah. And and if I, you know, if I if I'm available, I'll give you a call or, or text you back, or we can jump on a, a Slack or whatever. I mean, but um, I'm okay. going to add you. To my, to my I'll add a note to the log and a link to this document and such. And, okay. Uh, we'll uh, talk to you soon. All right, Jim. Hey, thank you. Um. I, like I said, I will be busy the next couple of weeks, but I will try to uh, I'll try to be here next Thursday if you want to do it again. Um, but I want to talk to you before then. I want, I'd like to talk to you even tomorrow about what you read tonight and how close we are and and uh, what you think the way forward is too. Yeah, um, you know, I, I would like to you know, uh, you know, I, I was hoping the people that have promised they're going to get involved in this, like. Uh, uh, plant eater and uh, uh, in particular you know can come in and you know help uh, with the organization and promotion and other things that uh, we need to have done here but yeah uh, we'll let you go uh, 